it's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Samsung C34 F791. The OSD is controlled by a jog button, a joystick, which is found at the rear of the monitor near the right side. This allows intuitive navigation of the OSD system. If you press that to the left, you can adjust the volume of the integrated speakers or anything connected to the 3.5mm jack. If you twiddle that up or down, you can quickly access the brightness, contrast and sharpness of the monitor. It's uh, actually left or right to adjust the volume, sorry. If you press that in, you can access the quick menu, which allows you to change the source, you can turn off the monitor, you can put it onto standby, you can access the PIP P-by-P, picture-in-picture or picture-by-picture picture settings. There are various different modes there. Um, I can't show you these as I've only got one individual source connected to the monitor at the moment. So you can adjust the size of the uh, picture in picture function. So you can have a small window showing one source to the right, um, you can have a slightly bigger window, an even bigger window, or you can have side by side which is picture by picture. You can adjust which source uses the sound, um, you can adjust what each source actually is if you've got many things connected to the monitor. You can adjust the aspect ratio scaling which I'll come on to in a little bit and you can independently adjust the contrast level for each section of the screen. The OSD is split into various sections, the main menu section of the OSD that is. The first section is picture that allows you to access the magic bright presets, some of these are explored in the review. There's a brightness setting, a contrast setting, and a sharpness setting. As usual for Samsung monitor, all of the settings are actually explained towards the right side as well. There's a colour submenu, which allows you to independently adjust the red, green, and blue colour channels, or you can select one of the colour tone presets, for example, Warm 2, which is a low blue light setting, as I explore in the review. There is Gamma, Mode 1, Mode 2, Mode 3, again explored in the review, three different Gamma modes. And as it says, it adjusts the middle level of luminance, and it adjusts the Gamma curve of the monitor. There's a Magic Upscale function, and it has, this is basically um, a feature to increase the sharpness level of the screen. There's also an independent sharpness control, as I've shown you, but this is just an easy way, if you're using a non-native resolution, to perhaps get back a little bit of sharpness. I actually find even mode 1 looks overly sharp. I um, can't really show you on the... Uh, sorry, mode 2 is actually slightly less sharp than mode 1. can't really show you on the video, but um, I might, might be able to show you on the icons over here, actually. So this is with the setting off. And mode 1, you see it sharpens them up a lot. Mode 2 sharpens them up a little bit. Um, looks a bit sharper in real life than it does on the video. Um, yes, yeah, some users would like these if you're using a non-nature resolution, which does soften the image due to interpolation, uh, but um, they're not really for me anyway. There's HDMI black level, which is only applicable if you're using an HDMI connection. Um, I'm not. I'm sorry. I am using an HDMI connection, but it's only applicable if you're connected using HDMI and also running a uh, the full HD resolution or something like that. So I've got it greyed out here. I'm running at the native 3440 by 1440. Uh, I've got it connected to a laptop at the moment, which is why I thought I had it connected to DisplayPort, but unfortunately my lovely test system, which I did have connected up via DisplayPort, has blown up on me. Therefore I'm using a laptop at the moment with HDMI. The, uh, there's an iSaver mode. 
and that is another low blue light setting, an alternative low blue light setting. You can probably, well you can see from the video, everything looks very flooded with that. That's because it reduces the static contrast massively, it makes the screen much dimmer, much warmer looking. Um, it's designed to decrease the amount of time your eye spends adjusting to varying light levels, so it could be more relaxing. I mean, I've, I find the normal settings perfectly relaxing anyway, the warm to low blue light setting, but this is an alternative which some users might find relaxing. I definitely wouldn't recommend just leaving this on because it does kill the contrast. Uh, it's really just for sort of extended periods or viewing in the evening if you find the monitor uncomfortable for whatever reason. Game mode, which I'm not going to really go through. I've been through this in various other reviews before. Um, it just upsets the image in many ways, makes it oversaturated, overly sharp, um, reduces the shade variety hugely. It's not a nice setting. I would ignore that really, I'd just keep it off. Um, response time, various different settings, standard faster and fastest, explored in the review. Picture size, auto and wide. These are explored in the interpolation and upscaling section of the review. And they're just different ways of allowing the monitor to scale. It has an internal scaler, um, so it depends if you want the aspect ratio to be maintained of the resolution you're running with black borders, which would be the auto option, or if you want it to just fill the entire screen, which is the wide option. And as I'm running the native resolution currently, this setting doesn't make a difference. Screen adjustment is just something which applies to old analog connections, it's all automatically adjusted for you with digital connections, so you don't need to worry about that. PIP, PYP, which I've already been through. Various on-screen display settings, you can turn on or off this transparency effect. You can change the position on the screen. By default, it's right in the bottom right corner of the screen, but I've adjusted it myself just for the sake of the video, because I've got the camera mounted to a tripod and it was a bit awkward having it uh, in the bottom right corner, because my tripod's a bit too tall. You can change the language that the OSD is displayed in. You can change the idle timeout period, which as it says there, how long the menu window will remain on the screen for when it's not in use. So after you've uh, last pressed the joystick in this case, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds or 200 seconds. Next up, the system. This allows you to activate FreeSync if you've got a compatible AMD GPU. You will actually be able to adjust this even if you've got an NVIDIA GPU. I'm currently connected to an NVIDIA laptop. It's actually my partner's laptop. Um, but that, that uh, the FreeSync option is still there even if you're connected to a graphics card that doesn't support it. So if you select Standard or Ultimate, it's not going to make a difference on the NVIDIA card. It's not going to activate FreeSync. But if you have an AMD GPU, you can activate this feature and it's explored in the review. Sound options for the integrated speakers or the anything connected to the 3.5mm jack. Um, the integrated speakers are decent. There are various different sound modes. Um, music being a bit, a bit more bassy, um, but standard pretty decent anyway. There's Eco Saving Plus and that just reduces the screen brightness to various preset values. It doesn't achieve anything that you can't achieve yourself just by adjusting the brightness um, and, and most people would want to make manual adjustments um, to the brightness. There's an off timer feature and after a given time in hours between 1 and 23 you'll get a little message on the screen um, and it'll say that the screen is going to turn off. And it turns off in the same way as you would turn it off using the joystick. Um, so using the um, power off function at the bottom there, like that. So after a lot of time, if you don't press the joystick and it's got this message on the screen, it'll turn off like this. You have to click the joystick in to turn it back on. That's a power saving measure. So. It's designed that if you just leave your monitor or your computer and you're not using it, um, it'll just turn the screen off to save a bit of power. 
So it doesn't have any sort of light sensor or anything like that, or, or motion sensor, proximity sensor. So it doesn't know if you're actually there. It's just based on whether you've pressed the button or not to say that you are there. There is PC slash AV mode, which isn't applicable to modern games consoles or modern PCs. It's just for some older games consoles where the AV mode may work better. You can also change the display port version to 1.1 or HDMI to 1.4 rather than 1.2 or 2.0 respectively. This is just a compatibility thing for systems that don't support the latest versions of these protocols. Um, you, if you want to use the full capabilities of the monitor, so 3440 by 1440 at 100 hertz, or indeed you want to use FreeSync on an AMD card, you do have to be um, uh, with a full range, I should say, um, refresh rate range, you should select 1.2 or 2.0 if of course your system has it. If it doesn't, as is the case with the laptop I've connected it to, I believe, as I said, it's my partner's laptop, and although I bought it for, I'm not actually sure which version of HDMI it uses, but it seems to be limited to 50 hertz at the native resolution, and it seems to say 1.4 there. So again, that's saying, yep, compatibility. Um, with crappy systems like that. The source detection allows you to manually select an input or have the monitor automatically select it for you. Key repeat time, as it says there, the response rate of a button when the button is pressed, just changes the behavior of the joystick. Power LED, um, I don't think I showed you that before, so I'll just quickly show you that there. It's uh, just a, a little medium blue, not very bright LED there. You can have it switched on when the monitor's working, or you can have it switched on when it's on standby. Um, if you actually turn the monitor off, or it's, I know it's still technically standby, but if you turn it off using the power function or whatever, um, the monitor, um, the, the power LED will go out. So you don't have to worry about that. But um, some people don't like it on when the monitor's on. They pref um, prefer to have it off when the monitor's on. So that's really what this uh, feature will do. So you see now the uh, power LED has gone out. There's also a reset all function which does what it says on the tin and indeed what it explains there. It resets everything to the factory default settings. Finally there's an information section which shows you the serial number of the screen and also the full model code. The preferred model code is just C34F791, but this shows you the full designation, the extended model code, shows you how you've connected it up, um, the current resolution and the refresh rate. As I've mentioned, the system I've got it connected to at the moment, my main test system actually uh, had a sort of catastrophic failure when I was moving house. Um, it didn't survive the journey, and unfortunately I'm um, having to use a, a system at the moment which doesn't support 100 hertz. It is a 100 hertz monitor, but, but the system doesn't support 100 hertz at the native resolution. Um, and my partner might kill me for saying it's a crappy system. It definitely isn't a crappy system. Um, nice little Alienware laptop with an OLED screen, an OLED screen. Actually very nice system, but it doesn't actually have HDMI 2, so it's a bit of a bummer for this screen. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I've been Adam for PCMonitors.info. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a, a link to that um, and also information about how you can support the work that I do in the description of the video on YouTube.